Is there anybody who doesn't know me here? Everybody knows me? Everybody's heard the song? Well, you got to play it before we can tell you. I want to do something different today. So I can hear I'm going to do something different. Um, a while ago, I took a, a month long course up in the uh, upstate New York, up in the mountains of upstate New York, taking a seminar. And the, the last night of the seminar, something happened that taught me that you learn something outside of class for some time. So this is what I learned. Sing the moonlight and uh, the breeze and the shape of her eyes. And then she kisses me. It finally hit me. This girl is not afraid of the dark. So that's all I'll tell you about this interlude, except to say that 
Love comes from out of nowhere sometimes. It surprises you. Out of left field. So unpredictable. And that's what keeps folks like me hopeful. So, for those of us who have someone tonight to have, be with, tonight when you go home, do your best to ring them bells, however that shows up for you. And those of us who are not quite there yet, just keep an open heart. Because if you have an open heart, you'll be ready when love comes knocking. That's the end of the sermon. But the end of the story goes as follows. We were walking back and uh, I wasn't talking much then. I was feeling beautiful. And I was searching for a melody that was as beautiful as I felt. So lament beautiful. Today is gun control. Oh. So this is this song is called uh, "Blow Them Away," okay? <laughs> By David Wilcox. Every morning I commute, mild mannered man in a business suit. When I want to go home, at the end of the day. Another car packed up in my way. I pull up beside him. I pull out my pistol and blow him away. When I'm on the road, I want to go fast. But there's a slow car, won't let me pass. I flash my lights, I honk my horn. Well, I consider him one. I pull up beside him, I pull on my pistol, and yeah, blow him away. I'm just a James, behind the wheel, it's high noon, in the automobile. You call me crazy, you call me sick, but I got to get to where I'm going too quick, son of a bitch. He cut me off. Three whole lanes. He pulled across. He made me mad. He made me swerve. He's gonna get what he deserves. I put up beside him. I pull out my pistol. And blow him away. Damn motorcycle. He's riding between. You know what I mean? He's got me lying like an act of war. I see him coming and I open my door. I knock him over. I pull out my pistol and blow him away. I'm just a James. the boulevard, got a red knit sweater and a matching hat, 
It's probably named Fifi or something. Stupid like that. I said, here, Fifi. I pull up my pistol. I said, here, Fifi. I pull up my pistol. I said, come here, Fifi. I pull up my pistol. But then I put it away. Manuel, thank you very much, and um, and of course a secondary thanks to the uh, a secondary thanks to Street Jimmy, one of the regulars in Bruce's blog, for holding the microphone. Um, he's he's going to ask for a fair amount of money from everybody in exchange for that uh, task. But, you should feel free to say thanks to no, no thanks. Uh, while we now have uh, Alex and Will. If Alex and Will will make their way to the front of the room, um, Alex is going to play the guitar, Will is going to sing, and while they're working their way up here, I will, uh, I will regale you with the second of Becca's jokes. This one she wrote out on two pages. I said you could tell me the thing in 20 seconds, but it's pretty good. Um, so this is a joke about Billy Rose, actually. But, so Billy Rose, no, not Billy. It's a, it's about a retired Chicago cop, which isn't Billy yet. He's he's sort, he's semi-retired, but not completely. There already. Um. So anyway, retired Chicago cop leaves the force with his enormous inflated pension. Sorry, couldn't resist. I now run the Better Government Association, so I pay attention to that stuff. And Billy's buddies have accused me of shutting down a, a website, which I think is really not really true. But anyway, so retired Chicago cop moves to Alaska. He just needs to be away from it all, and he's living by himself. His closest neighbor is 40 miles away. And he's enjoying the quiet time, away from the hustle bustle and the danger and the guns and the gangs and uh, <coughs> eating well because, of course, he has that enormous pension, thanks to all of us who live in the city of Chicago. Anyway, one day, one day, as Christmas is approaching, he hears a knock on the door. And he opens the door, and there, at the door is a big, burly, true mountain man. His Alaskan neighbor 40 miles away who says, I'm your neighbor 40 miles away and I just want to invite you to come and spend Christmas with us. And the cop has been a little bit lonesome so he's thinking that's a nice offer. And the big mountain man says to him, but I gotta tell you, there's gonna be a lot of drinking. And the cop says, well, that's fine. I love drinking. And he says, there's also going to be a lot of noise, a lot of noise. There might even be some fighting. And the cop says, I'm a former police officer. A little fighting's fine with me. And the mountain man says, there's also likely to be some wild sex. And the cop says, well, that's fine. I love wild sex. <laughs> So the officer says to him, well, well, what should I wear? And the mountain man says, wear whatever you want. It's just going to be you and me. <laughs> Becca, that, did I tell it okay? Okay. So she gets the writer's credit, then I get the talent credit, which is pretty much the way I live my whole professional life. People writing shit and me telling it. So I feel like I'm right back in the old saddle. This, this is truly satisfying that uh, Broadcasting Jones, that I don't get to satisfy all that often, to the chagrin of my buddy Bruce, who still laments the fact that I've never actually... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm interfering with the entertainment? Oh, sorry. Okay. So, I've been given the proverbial hook by the host, and so, we'll now allow the talent to proceed. She's good. Uh, Alex and Will. Alex and Will. Do I see this? Oh, yeah. Where's our shot? Where's the stand? Hey, Jimmy, get ready. Yeah, Mike. No, don't give me the mic. He's tiny.